please welcome Dr. Mike Dorkin. Uh, thanks, uh, everybody. Uh, our next speaker is Peter Zeiss. Peter Zeiss came uh, last year um, as the CMO and uh, Chief Advisor of, uh, at uh, Philips. Uh, uh, he was uh, trained as a, as a medic uh, and as an anesthesiologist and intensive care doctor uh, in Germany and then went to the medical devices uh, system. Um, uh, he's now transitioned from that into being more of an advisory role, uh, but also he's going to talk to us um, more about the future. Um, and as we heard this morning uh, from Mark, uh, one of the key elements of, of uh, our use of technology is how do, we, how do we move from a system where we were looking at very simple sampling rates up now up to sampling rates that can be four or five uh, hundred hertz. Um, and this is going to give us a challenge, but it's going to be one that's solved by the medical devices uh, system on our behalf. So thank you very much, Peter. I'm very much looking forward to your talk. Thank you. Please welcome Dr. Peter Zeiss. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike, Mike, Sanash, Joe, it's an honor and a privilege to be back and to be with you here talking today about patient safety. And I don't know what led your hand in putting the program together, for it feels to me like you have put speakers in front of the program that really build up momentum on elements that I really want to talk about. You mentioned already the panel earlier, Mike, but I really want to shout out as well to Dr. Diana Ramos, who spoke about the Strong Start and Beyond program in California, reducing maternal health. And then Abby, Abby Tifok just spoke about access to care. And please give me my first slide. <clears throat> I really want to talk to you today about innovations powered by human creativity that address these points. If we look at, is the clicker moving? What I promised last year when I was here, I finished my presentation with saying innovations will help save many lives. And since they take out cost of non-quality, they will make in the end healthcare even more affordable. And you will experience firsthand, and I really want you to be active with me, some of these innovations. Let's start <coughs> with something that's at the very core of it. We all know healthcare is complex. This is why we stumble in situations that overwhelm caregivers, and eventually they lead to preventable harm. So understanding what is happening in a complex situation is done actually in three stages. It's first a perception of what's happening, what data elements coming in, and you need to see a complete picture there. That's already challenging in itself. Then we need to comprehend what does this mean, and we need to project what is this leading to, for only if we truly understand the situation, the patient we are in, we can take the right decision and take the course of action. And yes, external factors play a role. Complexity of the system, stress, workload, individual factors play a role. We all know that training and ability has a huge impact there. But at the very core and bottom, situation awareness is key. And that has been proven to be in aviation. And we talked a lot about aviation. In 88% of cases, the root cause of aviation issues, and the same is true for anesthesia. By the way, pretty equally distributed between the three comprehension, perception, and projection. What did aviation industry do? That's for those who are in flight, interesting, a modern dashboard of a DA42. It has a artificial, synthetic vision, a horizon with simplified data. And that's so different from a former dashboard 
It's not a Boeing, that's a Concorde. But it has all the different little dials and things in there. And if an error occurs in a complex environment like this, it's super difficult to comprehend what's happening and so much easier if only relevant information is being displayed. Now here is where creativity comes in play. And I'm really proud to show you an early concept of, of Dr. David Scholl. He's a pilot and a great innovator. He works at the University Hospital in Zurich, USZ. And he thought, could we not make patient monitoring and the situation the patient is in more comprehensible? Instead of a virtual horizon, let's have a virtual, a visual patient. Oxygen saturation, so important in anesthesia. What if the patient would turn blue or rather dark purple? Blood pressure, we see how the patient moves in and out. And you see the pulse rate moving, you see the oxygenation and so forth. And let's look at reality. This is how that has been implemented on a Philips patient monitor. This is a released product. I'm not talking future, I'm talking something that is available. Now, let's look at data. There are studies and many more are coming, basically showing us this is easy to comprehend leads to faster comprehension of what's happening. And again, there are more studies coming, but I don't want to do literature with you. I want to do a test. For anesthesiologists, intensivists, what we're always so afraid of is desaturation. A blue patient, a blue baby, somebody's getting hypoxic. Dark purple here. So a traditional patient monitor, and we want to understand when does desaturation occur, has that information. You can now look at it, find it out, and make it easy. The second line in light blue with the 92, that's the oxygen saturation and no, that patient is not desaturated yet, not blue. You know now what a monitor looks like. We have many trained people in critical care, in anesthesia in the room. The others are as welcome as the experts, and I'll try to see the first hand who goes out, who helps identify which of the upcoming patients has a problem, who's desaturated. So, clock is running. Give me a sign of hands, please. The first one who sees a patient over there. Please, can you tell me? Yeah, the patient number eight, that was five seconds, 32. That was excellent. Perfect, you've saved the patient. Thank you so much. We can act in time. Now, Five seconds isn't bad, but what are we doing if we want to have more patients, not a single one? But now the new technology comes in place, the visual patient, and I want to do the same test again, but this time you need to help me find the two patients that are desaturated. Here we go. Shoot, that's not moving my clock. But <laughs> zero seconds isn't true, but you see yourself, it's so much faster. It's a lot easier to see who's desaturated. I think this will be over time a total game changer, how people will look at patient monitoring data, whether it's in anesthesia, whether it's also for less educated people in a home setting. I can see this really changing the way monitoring is being performed. And this is, by the way, a real life example. Now we look again at not a marketing video of Philips, but a customer video out of USZ Zurich. We see a patient deeply sedated in the OR. And this is how the normal new way of looking now for the colleagues in Zurich look like. This is a slave display coming up, traditionally displayed. It has the same information. 
but it's so much harder to truly understand what's happening. And if we move back again to the original first one, at least my eyes are immediately drawn to the right side to see what's happening with our patient. This will majorly impact situation awareness and improve patient safety. And it's a release product. Thank you. Now, we spoke about infant and maternal health, and I totally want to switch the subject with you. In my second new role, I'm the vice chair of a charity organization, Project Hope Germany. Some of you might know Project Hope. It's been here for 65 years. It's one of the major humanitarian and healthcare organizations, over a thousand employees, serving in over 30 countries, actually, with two main purposes, the urgent relief and also a lasting impact, making sure healthcare is sustainable. This is actually where Project Hope Germany, the organization I'm in, by the way, independent spin-off of Project Hope, but we still work very close together, focuses on improving infant and maternal health in Eastern European countries. Now, how does this come to patient safety? And what I'm talking about today with you about Project Hope Germany, because I'm really proud of something we have accomplished. Patient safety and access to care gets a total different perspective if you look what's happening in Ukraine. You've all seen the bombing of hospitals there, like the Children's Hospital in Kharkiv. As a consequence, not only are institutions being shelled, not only are healthcare workers kidnapped or being killed. By the way, that happens in Gaza, that happens in Sudan, that happens, unfortunately, in many other places too. But patients are not going to see their doctor anymore. And now we talk about pregnant women. In medieval times, pregnancy was a high-risk business. One to two percent of women giving birth died. Children mortality rate was 10 to 20 percent, a lot higher. And now in Ukraine, women are not seeing their doctors anymore. That's super, super bad. People being bumped back into medieval times. That's what in essence it is. Now here creativity comes in play. And if you look at Kharkiv region actually, heavily shelled, we came up with the idea to provide in three small oblasts, these are counties west of Kharkiv, with mo mobile maternity units, obstetricians, midwives, nurses, but also psychological support on board to again allow pregnant women to reach out here to healthcare professionals to get a proper exam. Also, by the way, there was training done for mothers with new children and so forth, many more things done. We had a pilot, we've done it for a couple of months, only roughly 3,000 women already have been diagnosed, have been visited, have been seen in those couple of months. In the meantime, we're past 5,000. That sounds small, but if we look just at the normal statistics of complications like a breech presentation, a placenta previa, a preeclampsia, a cervical insufficiency and so forth. It's fair to say that with creativity and reversing access to care, bringing it to those ladies and their unborn children, we have positively impacted the lives of at least a thousand people. In conclusion, Joe, you mentioned you're an optimist. I'm an optimist too. And I think we have seen here two truly innovative solutions that use our creativity, which is one of our strongest assets, and our determination to have an impact on patient safety. If we roll up our sleeves, if we are creative, if we innovate, 
we can and will address patient safety. Thank you so much.